What's up, everyone? Welcome to First Kids City Online. I'm Nathan. And I'm Emily. And, and we're, we're in the, the studio. studio. We are so excited to worship with you and your entire family. Today, we will be praising God together, diving into his word, and having some fun as well. If you have bread and juice available for our time of communion, go ahead and get it ready. If you don't have bread and juice, don't worry. Whatever you have in your kitchen will be just fine. We will take the Lord's Supper together in a few minutes. Right now, let's take a quick look at what we're setting this month in First Kids City. Our theme is On My Block, care for the people in your neighborhood. There are always opportunities to love like Jesus in your neighborhood. When you see a need, make the choice to love those around you. At First Kids City, we study a life app each and every month. A life app is what God is doing in you to change the world around you. And this month, our life app is compassion, caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. Loving like Jesus starts with compassion, and when we have compassion for others, we put their needs above our own. So let's say you've become friends with a kid in your neighborhood. That's great. But as you've gotten to know this friend, you found out their family doesn't go to church anywhere. So you decide to invite your new friend to church so they can have fun and grow closer to God. Another big thing we love to do at First Kids City is memorize God's Word. And this month we're studying Micah 6, 8. Let's read it together. The Lord has shown you what is good. He has told you what He requires of you. You must act with justice. You must love to show mercy. And you must be humble as you live in the sight of your God. Great job. Spend some time today highlighting this verse in your own Bible. That way you can find it again later. Now I'm super excited because guess what's next? It's game time. Hey guys, welcome to game time. I'm Sydney. And I'm Josh and today we're playing hopscotch. Be sure if you don't know how to play to check out the description for a guide on how to play. You ready? Yes. Awesome, let's do it. Three, two, one, <laughs> Go, yes, yes, go. Don't, Josh, it's okay. I messed up. Don't worry about it. Sydney's turn. Just let me, let me win this. <laughs> oh, that was Don't a good fall. throw. Don't fall. Don't worry, Josh, I'm not going to. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yeah, hey. Anyways, if you guys played with us, be sure to share videos and photos in the link right here. Are you guys ready to worship? Yes. Awesome, let's do it. Thank you for joining us today. Let's get ready to worship.
to continue our time of worship today by taking communion. If you don't have your bread and juice ready or whatever you have available, go ahead and prepare that right now. For thousands of years, God's people have gathered together to take a communion meal. During communion, it's important that we remember to do two things, remember and celebrate. On the night before Jesus was arrested, he gathered his disciples together for the Passover meal. But as they were eating, he did something a little out of the ordinary. He took some unleavened bread, broke it into a bunch of pieces, and passed it out to his friends. He told them the bread was his body, and they should eat it in remembrance of him. Then he took a cup and told them this was his blood of the covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This seems kind of odd, but Jesus was starting a new revolution. On the day when Jewish people gathered together, to celebrate and remember their escape from slavery at the hands of the Egyptians, Jesus was starting a new day, a day when all people would be free from the slavery of sin and death. In a few short hours, Jesus would be arrested and crucified. He would get the punishment for the sins that we committed. It was a terrible thing, but because of what Jesus did, we no longer have to be separated from God. We are free to live with him wholly and completely. We remember the life that Jesus led, how he never sinned, his amazing teachings and miracles, and we celebrate how he died for our sins and three days later rose again in the resurrection, defeating sin and death forever. And all of God's people to this day gather together to share this meal as one family. If you would like to remember and celebrate Jesus with us today, we invite you to take communion at home right now. One of the most important things you can do to love Jesus is to love God's heart. Here at First Kids City, that's just how we talk about prayer. Prayer is simply sharing your heart with God and letting Him share His heart with you. It's like talking to a close friend or a relative. Today we are going to pray together as a family. I'm going to say the prayer for us, and when I'm finished, we will all say Amen together, which means I agree. I encourage you to get into a posture of prayer at home right now. The position of our bodies often reflects the position of our hearts toward God. So feel free to get down on your knees, lay down on the floor, stand with your hands reaching toward God, or even just fold your hands and close your eyes. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, today we come before you in worship, and we thank you for everyone tuning in today, worshiping with us. We ask your blessing be on all of us as we dive into your word today. Open our eyes to your truth, and may we learn to love like Jesus. And all God's kids say, Amen. Now, let's get ready to hear a message from God's Word. What's up, everybody? Erica here, and I am so happy to have you on my vlog. As you can see, we've got a whole community of people living right here, working together to help each other and show compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. Every person is made in their own unique way, and every person can use what they have to show compassion. You wanna see? They can build things. Ooh, I know. They can fix things. And even make people feel safe. Everybody has a part to play. And there are clues, even when you're young, to help you know what your part is. For instance, you might like to help your parents out around the kitchen. Someday you may be a chef. 
Or maybe you like building things out of Legos. You might grow up to be a construction worker. Oh, these are not toys. What if you really love animals? Oh, how cute! Someday you could be a veterinarian. If you look really close at what you're good at and the gifts you've been given, you might get a glimpse of what you'll be like when you're older. Or, like you'll see in today's story, God can use what you have right now to do something miraculous. I'm not sure what I have to give, but I hope it involves a cute puppy. <laughs> I'll see you next time. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of John, chapter 6, verses 1 through 13. Let's set the stage. <clears throat> Jesus had been performing amazing miracles and healing people. Great crowds gathered wherever he went. So when Jesus needed a little time away, he crossed the Sea of Galilee with his friends. <sighs> he was probably looking forward to a quiet day on the mountainside overlooking the lake, but the crowds had followed. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Looks like thousands. Should we send them all away? No, I'll talk to them. Even though he was tired, Jesus welcomed the people. He could see the hunger in their hearts, so he sat down on the mountainside and began to teach them. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. Through the heat of the day, Jesus kept speaking to the people. As the sun sank lower, though, people started getting restless. See, nobody planned to stay there the whole day, and everybody was getting hungry. Well, Jesus knew how he would provide a meal, but first, he spoke to his friend Philip. Where can we buy bread for all these people to eat? Philip's eyes widened as he looked down over the mountainside. There are thousands of people here. Even buying enough bread for everyone to have one bite would take more than half a year's pay. <sighs> Feeding this crowd certainly seemed like an impossible job. Jesus' friends started to check around, trying to see if anyone at all had brought along some food. Now, imagine you are there on that very same hillside. Early this morning, you heard footsteps and excited voices just outside your home. They say Jesus is heading for the lake shore. Now, you had never seen Jesus, but you had heard a lot about him, so you begged your mom to let you go along, please. Please, 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 it's not far. And she said yes, <laughs> which is pretty amazing, but she wouldn't let you run out the door unprepared. I've wrapped up some bread and fish for you. Thanks, Mom. So you grabbed the bundle, thanks, Mom, and ran out the door joining the crowd. When you finally reached the lakeshore, the crowd was a little overwhelming. But high up on the mountainside, you could see a man surrounded by a close-knit group of followers. Sometimes it's good to be little, so you make your way, little by little, uphill through the crowd. Excuse me? After a while, you were so close. You could hear Jesus. Anyone who hears my word and believes him who has sent me has eternal life. You slid under someone's elbow and found a place to sit on a little rock just a few yards away from Jesus. And all day, you listened. You weren't bored even a bit because somehow everything Jesus said, it seemed like he was saying it just to you. In fact, you even forgot to eat your lunch. Oops, guess I am kind of hungry. Now you can see other people are getting hungry too. And Jesus has taken a short break to talk with his friends and then you're sad because Jesus is probably planning to send everybody away to get their own food. But then a few of his friends start walking through the crowd. Does anyone have any food? No, no, I don't have nothing here, I'm sorry. Oh, you really want your bread and fish at this point, but as tired and hungry as you are, you know Jesus has been working hard all day. So, you clear your throat, <clears throat> and then you say, I do. Great, what do you got? Five little loaves and two fish. Huh, not much. I know, but 
Jesus can have it? Well, thank you. Come along. You follow Jesus' friend Andrew right up to Jesus. Here's a boy with five small loaves of barley bread and two small fish. It won't go far in such a large crowd. Jesus turns and looks right at you. He can see you're hungry and that you've chosen to give up your lunch anyway. And then he smiles. <laughs> it's the best thank you you've ever gotten. He reaches out his hands and you give him your food. Then Jesus turns back to his friends. Have the people sit down. Jesus' friends exchanged surprised glances, but then they started gesturing to the crowd. All right, everyone sit down. Plenty of room. Like a slowly rolling wave from front to back, you see all the people sit down. Then, right beside you, Jesus takes your five small loaves of bread and two small fish, and he lifts them up to heaven. Father, thank you for this food you've given us. Then, Jesus takes the loaves and breaks them. He begins handing them out to his friends and to the people in the first rows on the ground. He does the same with the fish. You even get some of your own bread and fish back. Ooh, yum. You look around and you can see Jesus' friends still handing out pieces of fish and bread to the crowd. But this is way more than what I gave to Jesus. Soon, it seems like the entire crowd is eating dinner. Your own stomach is already full and you still have bread and fish left over. As the people around you begin to finish their meals, Jesus calls his friends again. Gather the leftover pieces. Don't waste anything. You watch in amazement as Jesus' friends go through the crowd with large baskets. And sure enough, lots of people have extra bread and fish to drop inside. When the men finally return to Jesus, they've collected 12 full baskets of leftover fish and bread. That's impossible. But you know it happened because you saw it and because you've met Jesus. Nearby, a man exclaims, This must be the prophet who's supposed to come into the world. Now, you aren't sure exactly what that means, but you are sure that Jesus deeply cares for every single person on this hillside. And you're sure that he can take your small lunch to meet every single person's need. When the boy showed up to see Jesus on a mountainside with a crowd of over 5,000 people, it probably never crossed his mind that he could be part of a miracle. All he had to offer was five loaves of bread and two fish, and God used it to feed everyone. You never know what God's going to do when you use what you have to help others. So what do you have? Do you like to entertain people? And no! Are you good with animals? Do you like to make things grow? Do you enjoy serving others? Everybody has something they can use to help others. Could be all you need are these, your hands. Your hands can help lift things, clean things, and repair things. Something else you have is this, your brain. You can use your brain to help solve problems or to help create something incredible. And what about these? Your ears. Sometimes to help others, all you need to do is listen. And then these, your elbows. Um, I'm not really sure what you can use your elbows for. Oh, I got it. You can use your elbows to help a small child find their parents in a crowd. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Mailed it. The one thing to remember today is this. Use what you have to help others. You don't have to wait until you're older. God can use even the smallest things to make a big difference. I just thought of another use for your elbows. The chicken dance. Your turn. Thanks so much for joining us on First Kids City Online. You're always welcome to join us for live services happening every Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m and we would love to hear from you. If you have any great pictures or videos of your family participating in worship or our game time, please send them to us down below. And don't forget, Sunday Funday is this month. Sunday Funday happens every fifth Sunday. We go all out to create a special weekend experience here at First Church. There will be donuts, prizes, and live teaching. It's a great day to invite friends or attend your first in-person Sunday service. 
And that's all for us today. Be sure to like and share this video with your friends. Bye.